Oh, aujourd'hui, euh, premièrement, avant de députer, j'aimerais prendre un instant pour reconnaître que nous sommes tous réunis aujourd'hui sur le territoire traditionnel non cédé du peuple Mi'kmaqi, un territoire qui est couvert par les traités de paix et d'amitié. Euh, je, dois vous dire, je dois vous dire, c'est vraiment le fun d'être ici parmi tellement de visages familiers, euh, des amis ainsi que des collègues. Thank you so much for all of you for joining us today. It's really great to be surrounded by many familiar faces in the crowd. Pour ceux qui me connaissent pas, je m'appelle Ginette petitpas taylor je suis la députée pour la circonscription de Moncton, Riverview et Dieppe, et je suis votre maîtresse de cérémonie aujourd'hui. Uh, I'm extremely happy to be joined today by my friends and colleagues. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the Honorable Mark Holland, Minister of Health. Mark, thank you so much for being with us today, and bienvenue en Acadie. Nous sommes toujours contents d'avoir des invités spéciaux de notre coin. Uh, aussi, Dominique Leblanc. Merci. Je pense qu'habituellement, on dit juste Dominique. Dominique is like Cher. He doesn't really need the, the formal introduction. Just the first name kind of works. So there we go. But Dominique, always great to see you here today. Uh, I'm also pleased to be here with Bruce Fitch, the Minister of Health, Provincial Minister of Health, and also uh, Kathy Bacchus, New Brunswick's Minister for Seniors. And last but not least, Sherry Wilson, the Minister of Mental Health and Addiction. So thank you so much for being here today. Nous sommes très heureux d'être ici parmi vous aujourd'hui pour cette annonce importante qui contribuera à améliorer les services de soins de santé et l'accès à ceux-ci, tous pour les résidents du Nouveau-Brunswick. Formerly, when I was the Minister of Health, I had the privilege of working with my home province to reach the first bilateral agreement supporting home and community care, mental health and addictions. I was thrilled to be here then and I'm again thrilled to be here today to see this collaboration continuing. J'aimerais aussi prendre un instant pour vraiment remercier l'hôpital Georges Dumas euh, qui nous ont bien accueillis aujourd'hui, puis aussi de dire un gros merci euh, à tous les travailleurs de la santé qui font un travail incroyable jour après jour ici dans la région du sud-est euh, du Nouveau-Brunswick. Like many of you here, we've all had family and friends that have had to, to access the services here at the hospital. And I just want to say thank you for the work that you do day in and day out. Not always easy, but we certainly appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Votre travail fait une réelle différence dans le soutien à la santé et le mieux-être des membres de notre communauté. So, now let's get this show on the road for the announcement. Before that I do the formal introduction of our first speaker, I also wanted to ad advise the media that we will be here afterwards for questions and scrums. So now it is my honor and privilege, as I've indicated, to welcome my friend and colleague, the Honorable Mark Holland, Minister of Health. Mark was first elected as the Member of Parliament for Ajax, Ontario back in 2004, and as the Member of Parliament, he served as the leader of the government in the House of Commons. He's also served as the Chief Government Whip and Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety, Emergency Preparedness. He's been a staunch advocate of helping marriage equality rights and played a key role in helping to reform Canada's animal cruelty laws. In both private and public roles, Minister Holland has backed health-related initiatives. He has served as the Executive Director of the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Canada's Ontario Mission, and as well as the National Director for Children and Youth. And I have to say, having worked with Mark for the past 10 years, he is a strong advocate when it comes to mental health issues and um, all health-related issues. And Mark, we've seen you work tirelessly over the past seven or eight months, and we're truly thrilled to have you here in Moncton. So without further ado, let's give Mark a warm welcome. Merci beaucoup, Jeanette. C'est un grand plaisir d'être ici avec euh, vous et euh, à Moncton euh, pour euh, une annonce aujourd'hui euh, vraiment important, vraiment important, mais pas juste pour euh, Nouveau-Brunswick, mais aussi pour notre pays. Et c'est vraiment avec un esprit de coopération que toutes les choses sont possibles. Et je veux commencer de dire un grand euh, merci à Bruce Fitch. Euh, c'est un grand plaisir de travailler avec vous, Bruce, et votre travail. Uh, de, uh, dans ce dossier uh, uh, ici, uh, cette uh, uh, annonce aujourd'hui est possible avec uh, uh, votre collaboration et merci beaucoup pour ça. Et aussi, c'est un grand plaisir d'être ici avec uh, mon ami Dominique, uh, uh, qui, qui est quelqu'un absolument remarquable. Mais l'histoire de Dominique récemment, c'était une uh, histoire, uh, uh, c'était une histoire remarquable aussi. Uh, et c'est un bon exemple de les, notre système de santé, mais aussi les qualités de, de santé ici à l'hôpital du, du monde. You know, uh, Dominic and I were seatmates. 
And uh, Dom would talk about uh, his journey and about the extraordinary doctors and nurses who came to his aid in his moment of darkness. Uh, and we know he wouldn't be here without you. And we're going to talk today about the challenges that exist in our healthcare system. But it's so important to take a moment how lucky we are to have a system that whether or not you're a minister of the crown or you're somebody uh, who comes in without a penny in your pocket, you're going to get the exact same care. The doctors and the nurses here, the personal support care workers, what they did for Dominic, let me just first of all say, uh, because my good friend is still with us and serving this country, thank you. And, you know, I had my own experience just uh, two weeks ago. My son was in a terrible car accident, and I was very worried for his life, and he was sent to Sunnybrook where he received extraordinary care. And that care would have been provided to him uh, whether or not he was on his own, again, without a penny, or he was the son of a health minister. So when we're having these incredible challenges, it's important to remember, we really do have the most extraordinary health system in the world. And when it's there, and when it's there and needed, boy, do our doctors and nurses and personal support care workers show up. C'était un temps vraiment difficile pendant la pandémie. Uh, C'était un temps difficile pour tout le monde, mais c'était particulièrement difficile pour les médecins et les infirmières. It was a time of challenge and difficulty beyond all reasonable asking. Uh, and yet, healthcare workers in that moment uh, all came together without, uh, without complaint, with a singular focus on helping us get through that. I also want to thank you for that. And you came out of that period and rightfully expected you were going to get a break. <laughs> that, you know, the, that view of coming out of the pandemic and all of that hard work that you were going to be given an opportunity um, to rest. But backlogs and burnout uh, meant that actually the challenge got bigger, not smaller. And a lot of the stresses that already existed in our health system became more evident. Ça, c'est la raison pour laquelle nous sommes ici aujourd'hui. C'est notre tour de prendre d'action et de s'assurer qu'on peut améliorer notre système de santé maintenant, mais de, 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 de faire des changements majeurs dans notre système avec des transformations qu'on a besoin. Because it's that spirit, to me, that is so remarkable and shows us what's possible. You know, in that brief moment in the pandemic when everybody was pulling all in the same direction, when we set aside jurisdiction and we set aside partisanship and difference, we were showing how much could be accomplished in our health system by working together. And that's certainly the spirit with which uh, we are here today, and it shows us what's possible. And so I want to say to you um, that this agreement is a starting line, not a finish line. That the investments that we're about to announce and talk about today are the start of what we need to do to transform our health system so that you on the on the front lines who've been working tirelessly through the pandemic and the days afterwards can know that each day in front of you is going to get better and that our public health system is going to receive the support that it needs. That's why I'm so pleased to be here today to announce two agreements that will see close to $430 million flow into New Brunswick healthcare system. These agreements are tailored to meet the unique needs and challenges of New Brunswick. Together, they represent an extremely important step forward. The first of these agreements is worth more than $313 million. It will increase coordination, and just to some examples, increase coordination and access to primary and care, which includes investing in mobile x-ray programs for nursing home residents to help reduce the number of transfers and non-urgent visits to the hospital. It will support recruitment, retention, and training initiatives for health workers. This will be done by implementing a practice readiness assessment program to support the transition of up to 10 international medical graduates into the workforce each year. It will modernize healthcare systems with health data and digital tools by improving timely access to both virtual and in-person primary care. It will expand the delivery of culturally appropriate mental health and substance use services. And I know that uh, my colleague, Dominic LeBlanc, We'll have more to say on that soon. We're also announcing the Aging with Dignity Agreement, providing close to $117 million over the next five years. This funding will help people in the province age closer to home. 
ce financement aidera les habitants de la province à vivre plus près de chez eux, ayant accès à soins à domicile ou un établissement de soins de longue durée sécuritaire. Nous devons nous assurer qu'après une vie de contribution et de labeur, le personne âgé profite de la retraite de, dans la santé et dans la dignité. Quickly, some examples of how that funding will be put into use is improving home and community care systems and palliative care, including opening new location for patients and their families to access integrated residential hospital, hospice services, strengthening the long-term care workforce through improving training for staff across the entire uh, long-term care continuum, aligning quality and safety measures across the long-term care sector to prevent premature entry into nursing homes. Together, these two agreements represent an important step forward. But mixed with our actions on pharmacare, on dental care, where we're looking upstream, uh, the work that we need to do together on interoperability, on data, on the Safe Long-Term Care Act, I just want you all to know that help is coming and that the force and the, that you met uh, the challenges of those dark days during the pandemic inspires all of us to make sure that we make the changes in our health system, to make sure that we have the best health system possible. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you here today. Thanks so much. Ah, yes. And with that, uh, it is uh, my pleasure to introduce Dominic LeBlanc, the Minister of Public Safety, uh, National Security, Intergovernmental Affairs, and Democratic Institutions. He's got a few jobs there. Merci, uh, merci beaucoup, Mark. <clears throat> Toujours un, un plaisir d'être avec toi. Uh, it's uh, for Jeanette and me to have our friend and colleague, Mark, uh, come to Moncton on a Tuesday morning with this important news and to do it here at the Georges L. Dumont uh, University Hospital Center. Mark means a great deal to me personally, uh, but thank you for your friendship. And you develop a, a certain camaraderie. Jeanette probably had the same experience. In the House of Commons, you share a desk. So you have a seatmate, right? You have one desk, two people, two chairs, but one desk. Uh, so the people you share the desk with, uh, you spend hours chatting away. There's votes that go late at night, all night in some cases. So you develop a, a cheerful and positive uh, and fun relationship with the women and men. You have a chance to share that little space in the House of Commons with. And Mark and I uh, had a couple of years together at that at that moment. And Mark, it means a lot to me that you're here. Thank you very much. Uh, je suis aussi très heureux, évidemment, d'être ici avec mon ami, ma voisine, Uh, Jeanette Petitpas-Taylor, uh, et nos amis, les ministres du gouvernement du Nouveau-Brunswick. Uh, Marc a souligné le partenariat important de notre gouvernement avec les provinces à travers le pays. Moi, comme ministre des uh, Relations intergouvernementales, j'ai une certaine perspective uh, sur l'importance de ces relations-là, et je salue uh, nos uh, ministres du gouvernement provincial pour leur partenariat et leur travail Uh, en partenariat avec nous et le gouvernement du Canada. As Mark uh, noted, uh, I have come to the Georges Dumont University Hospital uh, not only as a member of parliament uh, or as a minister. Mark uh, correctly noted that I came here as a patient. Uh, I see some of the doctors uh, who were so kind in treating me. I He's uh, Dr. Rémi Leblanc and Dr. Linda Leblanc. They're not all Leblancs, the doctors here. I thought I was like, Dr. Leblanc, like if yeah, paging Dr. Leblanc, half the room leaves. Uh, uh, Dr. Finn was my doctor and Dr. Chantal Arsenault. Mais les soins que j'ai reçus ici étaient extraordinaires. Les femmes et les hommes que Marc a décrits qui m'ont soigné dans les moments extrêmement difficiles, c'était la veille... Uh, de Noël, quand j'ai rencontré Rémi aux soins intensifs, à un moment donné, il y a six ans, uh, j'étais extraordinairement chanceux. Uh, et moi, je voulais juste témoigner ici, à votre hôpital, devant vous tous, uh, l'appréciation, le respect, l'admiration que j'ai uh, pour les soins que j'ai reçus. Et comme Marc a dit, je sais que c'est le cas qui se répète tous les jours, tous les semaines chez vous. Uh, vous faites un travail remarquable. On a souvent tendance à regarder des défis, des fils d'attente, des choses qu'on peut uh, améliorer ensemble. Et c'est vrai, comme Marc a bien dit, 
Mais c'est aussi vrai que quand on est vraiment malade, il y a des personnes extraordinaires qui se, qui se dévouent euh, à leurs patients. Et moi, j'ai été témoin de ça d'une façon extraordinaire. Um, so I'm happy to be here uh, with my colleagues uh, for what is an important announcement, we believe, uh, for the future of healthcare in our province in New Brunswick. Uh, I had an opportunity about a year and a half ago with Mark's predecessor as Minister of Health, Jean-Yves Duclos, after the Prime Minister had a meeting in Ottawa in February last year with all of the premiers uh, to talk about a long-term funding agreement uh, between the government of Canada and the 13 provinces and territories. Uh, and then Jean-Yves and I uh, took to the road. We saw uh, 13 provincial premiers and health ministers in about eight days across the country. And I remember that meeting, Bruce, we had in St. John with Premier Higgs. Uh, right away, the government of New Brunswick Uh, said they wanted to be a partner with the government of Canada. They wanted to work on a shared action plan that I am sure our provincial colleagues will describe. But it was an easy and constructive relationship with the government of New Brunswick from those first conversations. And I think it's important to say that. It took some time to work out the detailed agreement that Mark and Bruce are announcing today. Uh, but I was proud as a New Brunswicker, and Jeanette and I spoke about this often, in terms of the desire for the government of New Brunswick to work with the government of Canada, not simply to hassle about how much more money uh, can the government of Canada send the provinces. That's always in our federation, a back and forth discussion. I think Johnny McDonald convened the first meeting where the prime minister met premiers to talk about funding of different programs. What I liked about that conversation is you had governments across the country concerned about patients, about healthcare workers, about a system, as Mark said, that was facing stresses from the pandemic, but stresses that existed before the pandemic and have become, as all of you know better than, than certainly I would, uh, in some cases more complicated coming out of the pandemic. So the focus was on what can we do to improve a world-class healthcare system that's accessible to everybody uh, in a way that's affordable for the taxpayers that fund it, but with a focus on patient service and on outcomes. Uh, and that was the conversation that we had across the country. And that's the work that Mark has done in the last number of months. I, Mark and I stayed up a bit too late at my house in, uh, in town last night. And this is the 12th announcement that Mark uh, has made in recent weeks uh, across the country. There's one more after Moncton today. Uh, but Mark, you have, on behalf of our government, done a remarkable work in finalizing these agreements, which we hope will be an important step, not the final step, as you said, but an important step in improving a healthcare system that's so cherished by Canadians in every part of our country. Alors Marc, je te salue, je te remercie pour ton travail. Uh, Ginette l'a bien dit, Marc est quelqu'un dans sa vie personnelle et dans sa vie professionnelle en dehors de la politique qui a toujours été intéressé dans les questions de santé uh, et qui s'est donné uh, comme mission professionnelle et personnelle de travailler dans le domaine bien avant que le premier ministre lui a demandé d'être le ministre de la Santé du Canada. Alors, quel privilège de t'avoir à Moncton et merci pour ton travail. Et avec ça, je tourne la parole maintenant à notre ami Bruce Fitch, le ministre de la Santé du Nouveau-Brunswick. Bruce. Well, bonjour à tous et bienvenue à Moncton, Minister Holland. Uh, C'est un grand plaisir pour moi d'être ici aujourd'hui pour cette annonce. Quand vous avez uh, trois ministres uh, fédérales, trois ministres uh, provinciales, tu connais bien, c'est une bonne annonce, une big annonce, grande annonce aujourd'hui. And um, I, know, uh, I know I want to say thank you as well to all the uh, medical staff here uh, at this hospital and right across uh, Horizon and Vitality. And I, I sometimes mention uh, that my parents 
uh, were involved in the medical field. My father was a doctor, pediatrician, and sometimes he would work out of the Dumont Hospital, sometimes out of the Moncton Hospital. And uh, during the summers, he would do uh, do uh, clinics up Trachety, uh, Rishbakdo. And uh, the reason I mention that is because I know the sacrifices that families make uh, in order for their their parents or siblings to be doctors. And uh, so so through that story, I want to say thank you very much. Je veux dire merci beaucoup pour votre bon travail dans le système de santé ici à Nouveau-Brunswick. Parce que ton, ton travail uh, fait le système amélioré jour avant jour avant jour. So, uh, so continue your good work. Thank you for what you've done. And... Uh, I know, I know many people are going to be coming and telling me how to spend this money, and some will probably want me to spend it 14 times over, but uh, that's the work we do, and it's great to, uh, it's great to uh, have Minister Holland here in the Greater Moncton area. Uh, when, as, as Dominic said, we started with uh, Minister Duclos uh, in a, a year or two ago, or a year and a half, I guess, in St. John, and then the portfolio switched. And as you know, we have a Minister Holland here in New Brunswick. So when I received the first uh, invitation to talk on health care from M, Minister M. Holland, I picked up the phone and said, Mike, why, why are you sending me this uh, email and wanting to talk about? And of course, he freaked. He freaked. He thought someone was impersonating him. And as you know, nobody can impersonate uh, Mike Holland other than himself. So anyways, we got it sorted out, and it was Minister Mark Holland. Anyways, so we met, and uh, uh, we became friends. He's a very personable fellow, much like uh, our other two uh, ministers here today who do a great job uh, in representing uh, the, um, the Federation here in New Brunswick. And uh, Mark found this room, so if you can find this room, then you can run the healthcare system in, in Canada for sure. But um, I lost a lot of sleep last night because uh, Dominic usually has a good zinger for me, or and usually two or three during a 10-minute speech. So I was trying to come up with something. And I had nothing. I had nothing. So he didn't zing me today, so that's good. We're, we're going to be even. Thanks, Dominic. Great to see you. And thanks again. And, you know, we are, uh, we're pleased to see that the federal government has acknowledged the, the made in New Brunswick uh, solutions here in the, in the province. We've been working very, very hard to implement our health plan, uh, which is, is uh, again, gone through a couple of years. And I'm proud uh, that we just unveiled one of the biggest budgets for health care here in the province of New Brunswick to the tune of about $3.8 billion. And that's an increase of almost a billion dollars since 2018. So there is a significant increase in the uh, financial contribution, and we appreciate the federal government uh, helping us out there. Et nous avons fait les progrès considérables jusqu'à présent. Nous n'attendrons pas d'être l'action nous agressant. La population de Nouveau-Brunswick devient peu vieux. Nous avons 20% plus d'années qu'il reste au Canada. Dans les prochaines 15 ans, on attend que ce trois Nouveau-Brunswickois ou Nouveau-Brunswickois seront 65 au plus vieux, moi-même. I had a significant birthday the other day. We won't get into that. C'est l'une des raisons pour lesquelles de devoir rester attentif aux longues listes d'entendre pour les interventions surgicales. So we've made progress, hip and knee surgeries, the long lists that were there are reducing uh, every day because of the hard work and the investment uh, in healthcare here in the province of New Brunswick. We've reduced the cataract surgeries uh, because of uh, clinics that have opened up in uh, Bathurst, Miramichi, Fredericton, and there'll be more to come. So the people can see clearer and uh, have a better quality of life and also reduce their um, chance of falling which again, keeps them out of the hospital, keeps them out of the emergency room. And the mobile x-ray unit that was uh, mentioned by Minister Holland, that mobile x-ray unit started as a pilot project, uh, again, through an agreement, federal and provincial, and it prevented, uh, we started down in Loch Lomond Villa, and it prevented almost 340 visits of seniors to the emergency room to get an x-ray. So with this unit, you can just roll it up, 
x-ray the wrist, the hip, the back. It's it's very, very versatile. So we've expanded that right across all the zones here in the province of New Brunswick. And again, that's part of the investments that's made here to make people's lives better. So working together to improve healthcare for Canadians, this agreement is shared, is, uh, is centered around the four shared priorities, um, access to surgery, access to primary care, long-term care, and an integrated connected healthcare system. Um, I know we've had a busy time over the last few months in putting together the agreement, and it's great that we're here uh, today. Better healthcare is a priority for New Brunswickers. La meilleure de soins de santé est une priorité pour le New Brunswickois. So we've can we've uh, interesting a couple of things I'll just highlight. We've launched the My Health NB mobile phone app. If you don't have it, it's a way. I'm touching my phone. I'm not. It's right there. There's the apps on your phone, and you can get your you can get your blood results. You can get all the results right there on your phone, and you can check it out. Le recrutement est une priorité maintenant. Notre personnel travaille d'arche pour notre des professionnels à haut niveau dans notre province. And I had a text from one of our staff, uh, just I think it was Tuesday night, they're down in the Philippines, recruiting more people to come here and work in the um, healthcare system. They were in uh, Dubai earlier. And again, that's a great opportunity where people are looking to come to Canada. And people say, Canada is my dream country because they can come here, they can become a citizen and they can work and help us in our healthcare system. So I could go on and on, but I know that there's other people that want to get to this podium. And uh, so I will say, encore une fois, merci beaucoup, Minister Holland, et les autres ministres, mon ami uh, Dominique et Jeanette. It's uh, great to see you. And uh, let's keep up the good work. I know uh, the next speaker is a, a friend who's been uh, Following me, she was on Riverview Council and then became a, a provincial MLA, and now she's a, a minister. And our offices are just uh, a côté dans la uh, in the in the Department of Health. So my and she's doing a great job. Mental health and addictions. That's a tough portfolio. We know it's tough, and uh, she's working very very. So without any further ado, please welcome Minister Sherry Wilson. Mm -hmm. Well, good morning, everyone. Bonjour à tous. C'est un plaisir d'être ici aujourd'hui. Merci, Minister Holland, LeBlanc, et Petipa Taylor, Fitch, et Bacchus d'être ici. This is going to be great news for New Brunswick, and really appreciate you all being here today. This is a this is a great day indeed. Since becoming minister responsible for addictions mental health services, I've seen how much the Department of Health is doing on addictions and mental health. One of the key pillars our provincial health care plan is addictions and mental health to address the very real struggles individuals face. Mental health and substance use disorders are a concern for the people who struggle with them, for their loved ones, and for our communities. The government of New Brunswick is working to increase the availability of addiction and mental health services across our province. We're making a progress on this plan. We've seen eight initiatives of the addiction and mental health portfolio completed, while one is still in progress. One of our jobs is to provide the resources to the people who need it most because that provides help, hope. And where there is hope, there's a chance to recover. And that's where this funding comes in. We're working on projects that will improve the health of New Brunswickers, and it is so important that we offer evidence-based treatment and supports to these individuals who are working hard on a journey to recovery. Beyond hope, we have tangible ac accomplishments to celebrate and more to complete. We've launched the Planet Youth New Brunswick, a five-year project to assist communities in finding ways to reduce substance use amongst youth at four sites across our province. This allows us to help them to be more resilient and reach their full potential while giving communities a framework to make long-term changes to create healthy communities. We've also partnered with philanthropic um, organizations 
to provide young New Brunswickers and their families easier access to mental health and addiction supports through integrated youth wellness hubs around the province. We've also launched new addiction centers, uh, services center in Camelton, the Center for Hope and Harmony, managed by the Vitality Health Network, is now treating patients. It is part of a $24.5 million effort to improve access to detox programs and concurrent disorder treatments for those struggling with addiction. The center has added six beds for a total of 24. With the increase in the number of beds, here is, <coughs> excuse me, here going from 18 to 24, this center will help improve access to care for clients from across New Brunswick. Ces projets est une initiative de plan provincial de santé. The department has also introduced several resources to improve access, including open access to one-at-a-time therapy, which is now available at all community addiction and mental health clinics. The Bridge the Gap website offers online resources designed to support mental wellness. The New Brunswick Addiction and Mental Health Helpline is a free, confidential, bilingual 24 service for 24 hour service for citizens dealing with various addiction and mental health concerns. As of August 2023, Ridgewood Addiction Services has changed from 28 day rehab program to a concurrent disorder live in treatment program. Four beds were also added to the concurrent live in program. So we look forward to making further progress on delivering on initiatives outlined in the plan. So thank you, Merci. And now I'd like to turn the microphone over to my friend and colleague, Kathy Bacchus, who's been doing incredible work as Minister for Seniors. I always tease they pick me as Minister for Seniors because I have the most gray hair and need these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Minister Wilson, and good morning, everyone. Bonjour. It was so nice to meet you, Minister Holland, and uh, to renew uh, and say hello to uh, Minister LeBlanc and Minister Je uh, Petabau Taylor. I'm so pleased to be part of this announcement. What wonderful news for New Brunswickers and New Brunswick seniors. As we heard earlier, New Brunswick has the fastest growing population of seniors in the country. Like our colleagues at the Department of Health, the Department of Social Development has been working hard to prepare for this growth and meet the needs of seniors. As minister responsible for seniors, I believe all seniors deserve the opportunity to age with dignity and in comfort. Making this possible takes a collaborative effort. In my role as minister, I've had the honor of hearing from seniors from around the province on what it is they want and need. I can't expect to know that listening to somebody sitting in an office in Fredericton or Ottawa or wherever. Um, the thing I hear the most is our seniors would like to age at home and in their own communities. This is an important part of the provincial health plan, and we continue to work on a number of initiatives, including the ongoing expansion of the very successful Nursing Home Without Walls program. This program gives those aging at home the opportunity to utilize the various services provided by nursing homes. And although we've been focusing on helping seniors age at home, we are still making sure that those who reside in nursing homes have the care they need, and we are working hard to reduce assessment times for that long-term care. We need a stable workforce to ensure New Brunswickers receive the right care at the right time in the right place. And we've been working closely with our partners to make this happen. To address staffing challenges in the province, social development partners with a number of government departments, as well as the New Brunswick Association of Nursing Homes, uh, the, Associate, sorry, the Association of Special Care Homes, uh, individual nursing homes, and other senior-focused stakeholder groups. Social development continues to be a leader in supporting nursing home recruitment uh, with the international recruitment efforts. The departmental staff has been an integral part 
of hospital teams as they work to find the right level of care for those waiting in hospital. Initiatives in the bilateral agreement, like care coordination, will certainly aid in the effort to ensure people receive the right level of care that meets their needs. Ensuring long-term care facilities have the tools to care for people is also important. Ventilation upgrades, structural and condition assessments, and other items mentioned in the agreement will help us ensure these vital facilities have what they need. I am very excited about what is to come with this new partnership as we continue to work on making sure this important network has the means to meet the needs of our seniors. So let's get this agreement signed. <laughs> I'd like to invite uh, Minister Pettibaugh Taylor back to the podium. Thanks so much, Minister Baucus. Now I'd like to ask Minister Fitch and Minister Holland to come up front and perhaps the other ministers can just be in the background here for the official signing of the agreement. People love it, a bunch of politicians all <laughs> saying. <laughs> Mark, sign your real name. There it is. I love someone. <laughs> <laughs> Minister of Chief, where's your side? Where's your side? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not on. Yeah, I can't hear it. All right. Oh, great. The mic's working now. Thanks, everyone. Merci beaucoup, tout le monde. Nous allons maintenant passer à la période des questions. Um, if you have a question, please line up in the mic behind me. Reminder, you get one question, one follow-up. Um, please state your name, your outlet, and who your question is directed towards. And for the folks on Zoom, we'll do the questions in the room first and then go to the Zoom for questions. Thanks. No, I think it's a good opportunity. Hillary. No questions? Good. Thanks. <laughs> Encore une fois, si vous avez des questions, veuillez s'il vous plaît euh, former une file derrière moi euh, pour poser vos questions. Vous avez une question puis un suivi. Merci. Do you guys have a question? Oui, parfait. Est-ce qu'on est prêt? Oui. Parfait. Bonjour. Oui, Louis-Philippe Trodzo, Radio-Canada. 
juste, on, il y a eu beaucoup d'annonces en santé. On, si vous pouviez nous aider juste à démêler un peu tout ça, il y a eu évidemment, il y a un an, le, disons, la grande entente dans, à travers laquelle le fédéral versait 900 millions de dollars à la province. Il y a aussi l'entente travailler ensemble euh, sur trois ans avec des priorités des priorités communes et partagées. L'annonce d'aujourd'hui, c'est un nouvel argent, ça s'inscrit dans ces deux enveloppes-là. Si vous pouvez juste nous aider voilà, à démêler tous ces fonds qui sont investis en santé aujourd'hui. Je peux reprendre. Alors, euh, il y a beaucoup d'actions que les provinces prennent euh, dans le domaine de, de, de santé. Et c'est pour nous euh, le tendre avec 200 milliards de dollars dans les prochaines 10 ans. Uh, c'est une amélioration, ça, ça va augmenter uh, l'action les, uh, les, 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 uh, et l'amélioration de, no, de notre système de santé. Spécifiquement ici, il y a des uh, d'entente de, pour trois ans, uh, uh, plus que uh, uh, 400 millions de dollars, et ça va uh, s'assurer que les personnes peuvent accéder à le soin uh, de santé, particulièrement d'augmenter le nombre de de médecins, le, le nombre d'infirmières de, euh, de et euh, d'augmenter de, euh, euh, l'accès pour l'information et, et pour les, les données euh, et, euh, et aussi de prendre action pour, pour les années euh, et dans le domaine de la santé mentale. Mais c'est vraiment une, avec un esprit de coopération d'augmenter l'action qui existe avec une amélioration, avec euh, plus d'actions euh, euh, qui existent actuellement. Donc, les fonds annoncés aujourd'hui, c'est l'enveloppe travailler ensemble. Oui. Ce n'est pas des fonds additionnels à cet accord. Non, non, c'est vraiment les fonds additionnels. C'est parce qu'il y a des, des budgets euh, provinciaux et dans le budget, il y a des, des, des dépenses provinciales ou territoriales. Et euh, c'est évident là qu'il y a des actions que les provinces euh, euh, prennent. Mais euh, c'est l'argent ici et l'argent additionnel. Mais c'est évident dans euh, le budget, oui. Mais euh, avec, euh, avec l'entente, c'est notre objectif de s'assurer que c'est visible. L'argent fédéral est visible. Si l'argent fédéral va faire des choses spécifiques. Et aussi, il y a des indicateurs euh, qui sont communes partout au pays. Alors, c'est possible avec les indicateurs de voir le progrès dans chaque province et territoire. Et chaque année, euh, les le, le provinces va euh, euh, publiquement euh, euh, publier les indicateurs. Et c'est possible aussi de, de, de voir l'action et le progrès euh, dans les données. Merci. Euh, Noem Sindiqué, RDI. Ma question, c'est pour M. Leblanc. Euh, alors, c'est une question qui vient de nos collègues de la colline parlementaire à Ottawa. Oh, vraiment? Ce n'est euh, pas à propos de l'annonce aujourd'hui? Euh, non, non. Ah, okay. quelle surprise. Si, si vous permettez. <rire> alors, je, je vais mettre juste le point. Oui, J'ai bien hâte. J'ai bien hâte. OK. Qui disent que le Royaume-Uni, les États-Unis et le, la Nouvelle-Zélande accusent la Chine d'une série de cyberattaques contre ces institutions euh, vous, êtes-vous au courant d'attaques semblables contre le Canada et surtout, est-ce que nous appuyons les accusations de nos alliés? C'est euh, sûr que nous sommes au courant des menaces, des cyberattaques. Euh, la Chine est un pays euh, où on voit ce genre, euh, genre d'activité. Ce n'est pas le seul pays. Euh, on a eu hier soir une rencontre euh, avec les ministres des cinq pays. J'étais euh, sur une rencontre vidéo avec le secrétaire am américain de, de la sécurité intérieure, la ministre de la sécurité euh, publique euh, de l'Australie, celle de la Nouvelle-Zélande aussi et du Royaume-Uni. On a constaté un peu dans les conversations ce genre de menaces-là. Vous savez, euh, notre gouvernement investit d'une façon importante afin de protéger l'infrastructure essentielle contre des cyberattaques. Euh, et une des choses que les agences de sécurité nationale nous disent, c'est de ne pas discuter et les mesures qu'on a mises sur pied et d'où viennent les menaces. C'est un élément essentiel, je pense, de rassurer les Canadiens. Moi, je suis tout à fait euh, confiant que nous avons des systèmes euh, qui sont à la fine pointe de la technologie. Cependant, il n'y a pas un pays... Euh, qui n'est pas sujet à ce genre de menaces-là. Alors, en travaillant ensemble avec les trois alliés que vous avez suggérés, 
c'est peut-être la meilleure façon de bâtir une résilience face à nos systèmes d'infrastructure euh, euh, en termes d'infrastructure essentielle. Mm -hmm. Alors, nos collègues de CVC, la colline parlementaire, ah, okay. voudraient que vous répondiez à la même question, mais en anglais, si vous le voulez. Dire. Ah, so, uh, I actually participated in a Five Eyes uh, meeting uh, last evening with the uh, public uh, security and interior ministers, uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security for the United States, the British Home Secretary, and our colleagues from uh, New Zealand and Australia as well. Uh, we continue to work uh, as a group of Five Eyes countries in terms of building up uh, the resilience for critical infrastructure. Uh, no country is immune from the threat of cyber attacks. Um, China is certainly one of the threat actors in this area, but they're not alone. There are other countries that are active in this space as well. One of the things that we can do is invest uh, in the best cyber defense possible, uh, and we can share best practices with the allies that you mentioned, with Australia, the United Kingdom, the United States. Um, so those are ongoing discussions that we have Uh, in regular meetings of national security ministers, particularly of the Five Eyes community. Hi, uh, Alex Johnson with All New Brunswick. Uh, a question for Minister Fitch. Um, I was wondering if you could expand on, um, uh, you touched briefly on uh, sort of the international recruitment efforts going into uh, addressing labor shortages in, in healthcare. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about what the province is doing with that. Sure. Since I, excuse me, we're working with the RHAs and the long-term care sector to find uh, additional people to come to Canada and work in the uh, healthcare system. It could be uh, uh, personal care workers, it could be RNs, and of course, uh, physicians as well. So since I became minister, we've created uh, a human health resource division within the department, which helped coordinates all that. So for instance, there was a group that went to Dubai just in uh, February, and we had Shanix from the long-term care sector and Horizon from, uh, from uh, the RHA and interviewed probably, um, well, the results were very good. There was about 135 individuals that signed to come uh, to Canada and work in the healthcare system. And um, and just as I mentioned, the, the team is down in, uh, they were in Philippines and then moving to Thailand, and they had a goal of about 125 as well, and they were uh, over 60% to that goal. So it's it's uh, it's an opportunity again to augment the um, the the workers that are here now, and uh, we have we have need for those people whether it's to keep beds open in the nursing homes to allow long term care patients to move through the healthcare system or on the floor of the hospitals, and and we've worked with the nurses association to relieve to remove a number of barriers of people coming to Canada either in. Um, Uh, by paying for their registration and also having navigators to help them navigate the system when they arrive here. So it's uh, it's it's been a, a really rewarding experience that I met with some of the Filipinos that are working in Shanix, and they're so excited to be in Canada. And uh, it's good to see that result because I know they're going to treat the patients well. We were down in Loch Lomond Villa in St. John, and there was a young gentleman there who, again, was so excited that he could use his full scope of practice to help the seniors there. Uh, sorry, I'll keep it podium for a second, but follow up just uh, on uh, the tech upgrades. Uh, are you able to say anything more about uh, who's going to be doing that work and how that's going to be uh, done? In the budget, we had $10 million dollars for the uh, CIS Uh, which is the uh, integrated uh, communication system, which is a long-term project. But uh, some of the shorter-term projects are the electronic medical records, which will, again, whether it's through HealthLink or some of the uh, collaborative clinics uh, through Vitality or, or in the family medicine, um, So upgrading those systems so that that electronic medical record can be available when people present themselves uh, is going to again, improve their experience when they present themselves to the clinic um, for uh, treatment. Thank you. Hi, my name is Suzanne Lapointe. I'm with Global News. Uh, my questions are for Minister Holland. Thank you. Bye. 
So um, my first question is, um, there's new data out from the Canadian Institute on Health Information, and it shows that family doctors are increasingly uh, increasingly practicing specialty care, moving away from traditional, traditional family medicine. What does the government plan to do to make sure more people choose to stay in family medicine so that Canadians can get the primary care they're looking for? And how, do you, how are you going to further entice more people into fa- family medicine, given the rising cost of setting up practice? Well, thanks. It's a great question. And, and, you know, access to primary care is essential. Making sure that somebody can go and see a doctor uh, when they're having an issue or for that preventative checkup, um, it's not just a matter of, uh, of, of social justice. It really is prevention. And it means that things get caught early and we don't wind up with disastrous health outcomes or extreme cost. Uh, one of the things I'm very preoccupied, and I know Bruce feels the same way, uh, is we have to cut back the amount of administration and duplication and frustrating processes that exist for doctors. Uh, I talk to so many doctors who say, you know, in, in the area of family medicine, or frankly, in medicine general, generally, who say, look, I love my job, but I'm spending, I have to send this form five times, five different ways, fax it, write it. Um, our systems don't talk to each other. Uh, that's inefficient, but it also creates deep frustration. Uh, we do need to have more people entering family medicine. So across the country, we're working to see the number of spots increased. We're working as we did in Charlottetown when we got together as health ministers to talk about a 90-day service standard for recognition of foreign credentials, working with the College of Physicians and Surgeons to accelerate their process for record recognition, working with the Minister of Immigration to bring more people to the country who can do that work. So we've got to come at it kind of from every every possible angle. But uh, but again, the reason I start with that administrative piece is because it is such a frustration. Um, doctors uh, having to work in uh, legacy systems that don't make sense, frustrating them or pushing them into other areas. Thank you. Um, for my follow-up question, the federal government and New Brunswick's provincial government have at times had friction when it comes to health spending. For example, just last week, the, the feds clawed back uh, $1.9 million in health transfers. Um, are you on the same track when it comes to how this money is being spent, seeing as there's been some issues in the past? Sure. You know, I think it's a feature, not a challenge. I mean, it's a challenge, but I think it's a real feature of our system um, that we have um, a federation and that we have uh, different views and we work through them. Um, one of the th- and it makes us better uh, when we disagree. A disagreement is an opportunity uh, to hear each other and hear a different perspective uh, and try to find common ground. Um, so I know Bruce and I, you know, when we get an opportunity at federal and provincial tables, we're not going to agree on everything. If we did, that would be uh, deeply concerning because it, it wouldn't be representative of our democracy. But that push and pull requires us, if we're doing our job, to listen. And I think what Bruce understands and I understand is people don't care. Like if you're if you're interested in healthcare, you don't give a damn about what your partisanship is or your your jurisdiction is. They want to see us work together and to listen to one another. And chances are, uh, if you're in an argument, that both sides have a point to be made that needs to be heard and worked through. So, you know, on diagnostic care, as an example, that's something we're working through. We have a responsibility in the carriage of the Canada Health Act. And uh, and, and, and uh, the provincial government here has responsibilities that it has to adjudicate. We both have constituencies that we represent. So I think that's a positive thing. And I think we're working through that very positively. In fact, I would say, uh, you know, over the last year, the conversations that we've been having as health ministers have been incredibly constructive. And that, that, that friction you're describing uh, pushes us, uh, pushes us to find solutions and think differently. Are you finding a solution on this this one point nine million dollar issue with the diagnostics? Uh, you know, I, I would say I'll go back to the uh, the announcement that I made a couple of days ago in Ottawa. Um, you know, we uh, the with respect to diagnostic care, uh, it is our belief that no Canadian should have to pay for their health care, and that includes for diagnostic care. Uh, and we've been working with the provinces uh, this year. W- the way more uh, money rebated back to provinces. Uh, than charged in deductions, because basically those deductions occur because a patient was in a situation where they had to pay for their diagnostic care. So we see way more money now flowing back to provinces as we work with them. So there's lots of opportunities to work collaboratively to get that money to flow back. Uh, We're seeing that uh, positively happen, and I'm sure that we'll have positive conversations here. Thank you. So I'm uh, Sarah Seeley from the Times Transcript. And my first question was for Minister Howell, and I was just wondering if there's any specific criteria or limits on what this money uh, will be spent on, um, and if that's uh, been part of the discussions with the uh, the government. 
Well, we what we said is, you know, it's not up to us to come in and tell provinces how to run their health systems. This is really based around uh, common objectives, common principles. So there are, are four working areas that have been talked about. Uh, really making sure that we're that that we're taking collective action on health workforce. We've got a crisis right now in uh, health workforce, so we can make sure that we have the doctors and the nurses and the personal uh, support workers that we need within our health system. Um, that we have the opportunity uh, for for seniors to be able to ideally age at home if as long as possible and provide them supports there, and where not possible for them to um, be able to have uh, have places to age with dignity in their own communities. The data piece, and I think it's very present here in the agreement, uh, you know, we don't think a lot about data outside of health. When I knock on doors, people don't talk about it. But if you're in health, then that's all you think about a lot of times because there are so many things that are frustrating um, to try to get systems to talk together, to get to make sure that you don't have to repeat processes or repeat forms. So there are many areas of sort of common, uh, what I would call common ground that we're operating from. And so what we did is we set a framework within that to say provinces understand every what works here in New Brunswick isn't going to be working in Alberta, right? And then the solutions that are needed here are not going to be the same as are in another province or territory. So there's enormous flexibility inside of these plans. And it's really about how we can work and support one another in the journey of improving our healthcare system. And that's what you would have seen here. And that's why each of these, these agreements is different. Um, but what there were really two things that we asked. One, that that any federal money going in, we can actually see exactly what specific difference that is doing. So this concept of you know demonstrating that incremental spend, and then the second piece, and this is huge, is uh, having common indicators. You know, so that we can every year every year have a report from every province and territory on the same indicators across the entire system, so you can see how we're moving against that 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 progress. What you measure, you achieve. And so it's extremely important for us now for the first time to have common indicators across our health system so we can see how each province and each territory is doing, not as a function of punishing or shaming, but as a, as, a, as a function of we need to do more in this area, we're making progress here, we're not there. So it's not so anecdotal, uh, because I think that's really frustrating. You know, when I go around and I talk to health professionals, they'll tell me what's working and what isn't, but they can't demonstrate it in data and therefore, it's very hard to um, then be able to act. It needs to be rooted in evaluation. It needs to be rooted in data. It needs to be rooted in science. So that's one of the things I'm looking forward to convene health ministers and have those conversations around the next steps. For me, data interoperability, reducing administrative burden, these are things that we can do together and I think represent an incredible opportunity. And then my second question is for Minister Fitch. I was just wondering what proportion of this money would be for ongoing projects that have already been started and which would be for, for new projects? Uh, thanks. Good question. And there are a number of projects that we mentioned during the speeches, like the uh, mobile x-ray units that uh, that uh, is this funds would be directed to, plus also some of the mental health and addiction initiatives that Minister Wilson uh, mentioned, like the, the youth hub and the um, one-time access. Uh, there's a number of things like that. I'm going to be doing my estimates in a week's time and probably rolling out a lot of those details as, uh, as time goes on. But there is quite a, a substantial uh, amount of work that's gone into uh, documentation and uh, some of the KPIs and looking forward to, are we improving the system with uh, with these investments? Bonjour, Cédric Tevenin pour l'Acadie Nouvelle. Une question pour Monsieur Fitch ou Monsieur Miller. Vous avez déjà un peu répondu, mais vous aurez l'occasion de le refaire, si c'est le cas. Le gouvernement fédéral a déjà augmenté ses investissements dans la santé par le passé. Ça ne s'est pas forcément traduit par des, par des améliorations aux services de santé fournis aux citoyens, mais plutôt par des augmentations de salaire. Comment vous allez être sûr cette fois que ces investissements vont véritablement améliorer les services donnés aux patients? Well, il va y avoir des, des indicateurs et dans les indicateurs, c est, c est, ça va être évident que le progrès est là, euh, premièrement. Deuxièmement, comme, comme j'ai déjà expliqué, euh, dans l'entente, euh, c'est euh, l'argent additionnel euh, que le gouvernement fédéral euh, va donner et, indi et c'est indiqué, indiqué euh, clairement et c'est évident dans, dans l'entente que euh, toute l'information est là euh, avec l'investissement le, le, euh, fédéral. 
Et euh, euh, troisièmement, euh, c'est il y a 200 milliards de dollars pour, pour 10 années, mais l'entente est pour trois ans. Euh, alors, il y a une occasion de travailler euh, ensemble dans cette période-là. Et après trois ans, il y a une occasion de évaluer le succès de, 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 de notre co collaboration. Mais je vais, je vais dire clairement qu'il euh, y a un bon esprit de coopération ici euh, avec le gouvernement de, euh, de Nouveau-Brunswick. Et c'est clair avec Bruce et avec des autres ministres euh, provinciaux ici euh, qu'il y a une tente, euh, euh, un vrai effort d'améliorer notre système de santé. Alors, il y a des, oui, il y a des choses de s'assurer que l'argent va, va être investi dans le système de santé. Mais à, à l'extérieur de ça, il y, a des, il y a bon esprit de coopération et avec ça, je suis vraiment sûr qu'il va y avoir des succès dans ce domaine-là. Ça, c'est très clair, une bonne réponse. Et euh, je, euh, je connais bien euh, le, les personnes qui travaillent dans le système de santé et aussi les personnes qui travaillent dans le euh, département de santé euh, avec les le indicateurs. Et euh, nous travaillons trop, euh, regarde les indicateurs, c'est wait time or, for surgery, ou les autres, euh, c'est le cataracts, le wait, the wait time, the wait line and uh, reducing things like that to more or less a, a national average is uh, is part of those indicators to know that we're moving in the right direction. Okay, alors une petite question de suivi pour vous monsieur Fitch. Euh, on parle d'une entente pour trois ans, c'est les trois prochaines années, c'est ça Donc j'imagine que l'argent qui est annoncé aujourd'hui n'était pas inclus dans le budget 2024-2025. Uh, merci beaucoup. Bonne question. Et uh, oui, oui c'est uh, inclus dans le budget pour cette année parce que uh, nous commençons la discussion l'année passée avec uh, les autres ministres du Clos. Et uh, donc, uh, je veux l'argent le, 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 dans ce budget. Hi, uh, David Koch from the NB Media Co-op. Um, just uh, looking at the press release uh, Detailing the spending, it mentions under retention, improve safety and reduce stress in the workplace. So just wondering, I guess, the question for Mr. Fitch, uh, just details on benchmarks, goals, um, what safety issues um, do you hope to uh, to tackle? Uh, sure, great question. And we know that there's no place for violence in the workforce. So uh, the RHAs are, are working with staff in order to prevent some of those uh, indicators of violence. And the other part of your question, when we talk about uh, some of those indicators of, of how we're improving the system, again, looking at some of those national benchmarks, like the wait time for MRIs. Um, if we're over that national benchmark, which let's say it's 40 days, using the system, whether it's uh, electronic scheduling or self-scheduling, in order so people have more input into when they have that MRI or where they have it, because the wait time in Miramichi is much shorter than than Greater Moncton. So folks can book up in the Miramichi, go there and get their uh, non-urgent MRI quick quicker. Sorry, from a labor perspective in terms of retention, what- um... Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. Um, Right. Well, part of that whole discussion on uh, the workplace and the safety and having enough people on the shift to make sure that you're not short staffed, that's where that retention comes into play. So whether it's uh, increasing the number of RN students in, in schools, uh, when we took over in 18, there was about 888 uh, RN students. Last count, uh, there was 1,689. So we've almost doubled the number of, of students going through the system. And uh, UMB St. John has actually reduced the number of years to uh, three as opposed to a four-year degree. So having the international recruitment, having the recruitment throughout Canada, and also having more students will will make sure that there are appropriate number of people and the appropriate number of, uh, of uh, care care providers to make the workplace safer. And if workplace safer, it's a better experience. People tend not to be as disheartened and uh, consider leaving. Okay, and just for the follow-up, um, it mentions in the press release expanding accessibility for uh, insulin pumps in particular. And uh, just, um, uh, I, I know that also in uh, 
C64 at the federal uh, level. There, um, there's some information. Uh, I think there's supposed to be some coverage for insulin medication with respect to that. We hear a lot about people, you know, struggling to afford insulin medication. So just wondering if you could, you know, say, say more about uh, this and uh, particularly, you know, is the goal ultimately universal coverage for, uh, for diabetes? So I guess that'd be for-, for both. A Absolutely. So let, let me be clear. Uh, the legislation we put forward in parliament would see, uh, uh, would establish the framework uh, and the dollars for us to work with provinces and territories to establish universal coverage for diabetes drugs uh, and to create a fund that would be for the, the apparatus that support diabetes. So you mentioned- uh, uh, you know, whether or not it's test strips or it's syringes or it's uh, monitors or uh, or pumps. Uh, and so I've had a conversation, Bruce and I, uh, about this. We have uh, some work to do, just like this agreement uh, and the aging with dignity, both the aging with dignity and working together agreement required some time to work through the details. But to be clear, it would mean that somebody, regardless of their circ their age or income, would be able to get access to the diabetes medication they need. And, and let me just talk for one quick second about why that's so important. I've said this, and I, I don't think I can say it enough. You know, I, when I go into diabetes clinics and I talk, like Sarah in Ottawa was talking to me about, uh, you know, meeting patients who, uh, when they uh, don't have their diabetes medication, um, you know, wind up coming into that clinic and need to get an, a limb amputated or wind up in a situation where they're having a cardiovascular event and how devastating that is for a healthcare worker. Uh, we're talking to uh, people uh, in uh, who are dealing with diabetes patients who can't afford their uh, uh, syringes. So they're reusing syringes and then getting a bloodborne disease. You know, like this is not things that should be happening in this country. So uh, I'm deeply hopeful that all parties will come together and set aside partisanship and do the right thing to support diabetes medication. I could speak uh, about universal contraception and I won't, but that's equally as important and also part of that uh, bill that's before the House. All right. Thanks, everyone. Due to time constraints, we'll have to end, end things off here. Thanks so much. Recording stopped.